for me that just feels like growing in different directions if we're if we're off pursuing something separate from from what we have together here welcome to the open bedroom podcast i'm your host jennifer kalo welcome to conversations about open relationships online dating conscious uncoupling and creating the relationship that truly aligns for you Welcome back to another episode. This is my second with Scott. Today's episode is episode 120, when they want you, but not your partner. If you have not listened to episode 119, Scott Spills, Why We Only Date Women, once you get done with this one, just go back and listen to 119. It was a really good conversation about why and how Scott and I date. And then this conversation today leads more into how we practice this in real life. Enjoy. Um, when it comes down to it, I'm just not comfortable with uh, with you having sex with another man, for one. Um, and that's like, I recognize that that's a totally emotional position and there's there's jealousy behind it. But then again, relationships are completely emotional constructs. It's all dictated by emotions and what people are feeling um and so i guess i also recognize in that the you know you could say unfairness or or whatever like it's okay for me to have sex with another woman but it's not okay for you to have sex with another man and so on one hand I don't have a, I'm not doing this because I want to have sex with other women. Like I think, and I think what we've seen with a lot of quote unquote poly couples or open couples is really including the first couple that we dated was really the, the whole reason they were doing that is because one partner just wanted to be able to have sex with other people. And the other person is kind of putting up with it. Um, I don't, I don't have a, a, just an inherent drive to go have sex with other women. Uh, but, um, but it's, it's something that happens, uh, through our, our shared relationships. I mean, do you enjoy it? Is it fun? Why do you do it? Uh, I do it because sure. There's a part of me that enjoys it. Like it's, it's enjoyable to be desired by another person like that. That's, that is exciting. It's exciting when a new person, uh, finds you desirable and sexually attractive. Mm -hmm. Um, but also because it excites you, it gets you like, I don't, there have been women that I have found attractive, but they weren't, they weren't excited about you. Mm -hmm. And so that just absolutely killed my excitement for them. Like mm -hmm. if I thought that they weren't into you, at least as much as they're into me, then I don't, I don't really want to do anything with them. I also, uh, there was, a point where I had an opportunity where uh, an ex of mine, a former partner, uh, really wanted to really wanted us to to I wouldn't say reconnect in a relationship sense, but basically she wanted me to come out and have a, like a sex weekend with her. Mm -hmm. And um, and at first just because of conversations, because you had expressed so much that you found it so exciting when other women were into me and wanted to, wanted to have sex with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought, well, I, I guess maybe this could work out. And I told you about it and that I'll tell Jen about it. And, uh, and at first when I mentioned like, Oh, I have this ex out in Arizona who, who really wants to have sex with me again. Mm -hmm. And you were like, that's hot. You should, is she going to come visit you? Or are you going to visit her? Like you were really curious about it. 
Um, and we talked about it off and on, and I talked about it a little bit with this, with this other woman, but then as it came to being something that was actually plausibly could happen, like we were actually thinking about, well, maybe I should make plans to go out and visit her. Like, uh, it, it caused you to start feeling some pangs of jealousy and, uh, and as soon as I got the sense of that, as soon as I got the sense that, oh, well, Jen's feeling a little left out and feeling a little jealous, I was like, okay, I'm not doing this. Like, I don't want to do this. The last thing I want to do is uh, go, like, what what would be what would be the purpose? Like, how does it benefit our relationship then? if I go out and have sex with this other woman, it's, it's, it puts a strain on our relationship and that's not what I want to do. That's the opposite of what I wanted to do. And so it became very clear to me that, uh, that, that like, I, I just got my head straight with the idea that I don't want to pursue anybody that I don't want to pursue anything separate from Jen. I don't want to, go pursue anyone else. I just, if, if I'm going to pursue anybody, it's going to be, uh, with the intention of, of meeting somebody that I think would enjoy both of us that would enjoy Jen at, at least as much as me. And then see if we, if the three of us form a connection together. Uh, so the, the trade-off for Jen doesn't have sex with other men is I don't go, I don't pursue other women outside of somebody that, that wants to be with both of us. I'm not, I'm not going to step into the trap of, of gratifying my ego by going out and, and pursuing every woman that, that expresses some sort of attraction to me. Um, I'm not going to do this crap where, you know, I'm leaving Jen at home uh, while I go fool around with somebody else, um, and and I and it Jen put it as as opening or closing a door. I'm keeping the door closed on because if I do that, if I go out and start have like just having sex separately with other women or start pursuing other women separately, I have no grounds whatsoever for saying, well, I'm not comfortable with Jen going out and pursuing other men mm -hmm. like that. That would be incredibly like it already. The, the situation is already tinged with hypocrisy. Um, and that would just be, that really would be unfair. And I don't, I don't, and I'm not interested in that. I, I literally have no drive to do that anyway. Um, and then, but as far as like, do I enjoy having sex with other women? Yeah, but I enjoy it because Jen's right there and she's, she's watching and she's getting turned on by it and she's joining in. And, uh, and I love sharing that with her. We've had a few experiences where even when we're in bed together, um, you know, it felt like I was the only connecting point and mm -hmm. Jen and the, and the other woman there, there wasn't really any, any fire between the two of them. It was just kind of me going back and forth. And even that I don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't enjoy that. I enjoy it when I see that it's, it really is pretty much an, an equitable attraction between the three of us and we're all excited for each other equally. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to jump in just a little bit. Cause I want to add a few things. Um, okay. it's such a different energy when we have had women come be a part of our relationship that have said, I'm bisexual. I'm attracted to Jen. Like I'm, I'm open to this. Um, and then there's nothing between them and me. Like there's, yeah, there's like, oh, you're pretty and I'll give you a kiss, but there's not like, I want to fucking devour you in the same oh, way. Oh, I love your I wanna, podcast. I love your podcast in the same way that they want to devour Scott, you know? 
And I get it. He's delicious. And it's wonderful having cock inside of you. Right. But like, it's, it's just different. It's a different feeling. And so what I'm learning as discernment on my end for anyone that's listening, that's curious about whole like girl on girl stuff is there's like leaning towards lesbian bisexuals who like actually want to eat pussy and are really fucking into you and will send you dirty pictures and will keep that fire and that's what I like. Like, I want to feel the same kind of zing that I feel towards Scott. It's not I'm completely the same, but like, I am sexually excited by Scott all day. I want to feel sexually excited by the women that we're with. And there's been several times that Scott and I have been with someone who said, like, I'm bisexual. And it's like, it, it ends up being a V. It ends up Scott having to do all the work to fuck two different women who just lay there like pillow princesses because they're not doing anything to each other. And what's way more fun for us is the dynamic where like I'm into her and she's into me and he's into both of us and he's seeing us kiss and we're making out and nipples are in each other's mouths and we're going down on each other and one's squirting on top of me. Like that's fucking hot as shit. Are you okay, Scott? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what we're pursuing moving forward. It's like, it's so interesting how the dynamic has shifted over the last year where we were like, will date couples? And then we're like, no, that doesn't work well. Then we're like, will date women? And then I was like, there's something off. <laughs> and they're like, okay, we only want bisexual women. And then I'm like, this still isn't right. You know, like it still feels weird when he's having to put work into the bedroom. And instead of it feeling like work, it feels like a lot of fun because we're all so involved with each other that's the sweet spot for us. Yes, I agree. <laughs> and I just want to stop too and say like, thank you, Scott, for creating this environment, this container, I'll use that word, where I feel so desired and I feel so respected because you aren't flying to Arizona to go fuck an old girlfriend. Yeah. And like, if we ever got to that place where we were giving each other that kind of, I don't know, freedom or permission or hall passes or whatever, we got into that dynamic. Like, I know I would feel, I would find a way to soothe the jealousy. I would find a way to soothe my nervous system um, and, and vice versa. I just, I appreciate that we're not there. And I appreciate yeah. that you're always so considerate of me. And I try to also be so considerate of you. Yeah, you you do. And I am I'm very grateful for that. And yeah, I don't I don't know if I'll I, I can't see myself getting to the point where I want us to go like do things just Sep like it's one thing if we're both we've both established a relationship with somebody. And then occasionally just you or she fools around or I and, and her fool around. Um, uh, but that's very different from like just one of us going off and pursuing a completely separate late relationship that we're not both involved in. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, uh, you know, people's views change over time and, and priorities and values. But I, I think at least for my part, uh, that just, that doesn't seem like, like I want to, I want to continue to grow together with you. Like I love us growing closer together. And for me, that just feels like growing in different directions if we're if we're off pursuing something separate from from what we have together here yeah uh, i'm not sure if you'll want to contribute to this at, or not but i'm going to go ahead and add it in i was okay. recording a podcast yesterday with another person named mark allen um and he'll be on eventually you'll see him anyway we were talking about how delicious 
open relationships can be and what they can bring into your relationship. We're not trying to convert anybody to be open, but I think sometimes people listen to these kind of podcasts because they're curious. Like I listen to Thruple talk because I'm so curious how a Thruple lives in a polygamist environment together. And it's fascinating that they'll peel the curtain back and let us take a peek in. Like, how do you sleep and how do you raise kids and who does the dishes? And like, I want to know these things. So sometimes I like to, <clears throat> oftentimes I like to peel the curtain back into our lives and our, we have throuples, right? We currently have two throuples. Yeah. What, why, like, why do we do it? And what I like to say or how I like to explain it is like, there's, there's a relationship that Scott and I have together that is super sexy and we have great sex and it's super connective and very intimate and very deep. And when we open our bedroom, like this podcast, which by the way, we're going to give kudos to Scott for naming the open bedroom <laughs> podcast. But when we open our bedroom to another woman, it adds a whole nother level to our desire for each other, our desire for sharing, to see pleasure on our partner's face, to watch someone else please our partner, to watch them please someone else. And not only is it just like a visual and energetic and sexual connection, but our conversations together, Scott and I, because we're open, have to be deep and connective and communicative and sometimes difficult. Like just the other day I came to him and I was like, I'm feeling a certain way. And he was like, what? I don't understand. And like, we just kept digging in and it felt bristly. And then we moved past it. And every time we have conversations that feel that way, I always feel like it brings us another layer deeper together and another layer closer. Like, I don't think it's possible to get any closer and like, okay, there's another, it's like ringing or like stitching together where we're like, okay, now we're even more aligned as we move forward. Do you want to add anything to that? No, that's great. That's uh, yeah. I, sh I share your feelings about it. Okay. Hey there. Did you know that I do online coaching? Yes, I do online coaching in the sex and relationship space. Some of the topics that are near and dear to my heart are open relationships. So that includes polyamory, swinging, or what we call the lifestyle. I also love conversations around online dating. We're talking Bumble, Tinder, Field, and more. And then the last thing that's really passionate and close to my heart is conscious uncoupling. That means we get to break up with people with love and respect, with dignity and hope. Um, we get to create a life for our children that gets to be a little bit different. We can do things better than we have in the past. So if any of these topics sound interesting to you and you'd love to get some coaching from me, check out the link in the show notes or the link in my bio for more information on coaching with Jen. So the last question that I have for you, and we can keep going if you want, but one I had written down is how do you feel about couples privilege? We hear about that a lot. We hear mm -hmm. about the dark side of unicorn hunting, which I would never say you and I are unicorn hunters. We no. just happen to attract unicorns because that's our dynamic. We've had single unicorns. We've got had married right now. We have one single, we have one married. Well, well also, you... uh, if I could interject, I think and people play so much uh value and get get really um get really particular about the definitions of labels in this scene yeah uh but i think there's it's also worth differentiating like quote unquote unicorns who who are only interested in going and like just having having casual sex with couples. with couples they're just mm -hmm. they just want to go be a third for somebody's Have we experienced uh, that, sex Scott? session um yeah but i don't think it was intentional okay. i think that i think that everybody that we've that who, who's joined in with us we had the intent of it being a like somebody that we would uh build a connection with and see regularly and those are the kind of people those are the kind of of women that we are that we're interested in. We're not, we're not looking for somebody to just come hop into bed with us once. And like, that's all she is to us is, you know, a, a, a sex toy who, who jumps in. Um, and, and, you know, no, 
I don't, I don't have any negative judgment about who women who want to be that. Cause there are plenty of women who enjoy doing that. Um, but I would, I would say like, I don't, I don't view us as unicorn hunters because that we're not, we're not looking to bag a unicorn. We're looking to, uh, build, build, a a an ongoing connection with somebody who we enjoy spending time with and we enjoy uh, feeling closeness and affection with and, and having great sex with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So like back to my question about like couples privilege and us being the couple and inviting someone in, like how, how would you say that we deal with that? What, What do you mean when you say couples privilege? So couples privilege means the couple is prioritized uh, against anyone else that might potentially mm. be involved with them. And I would say um, we definitely prioritize ourselves as the couple. I would say well, not, absolutely. not against someone else, but just like we're established and there's kids and there's a house and there's mortgage and there's our own calendars and stuff. But how do we deal with... I guess what I'm trying to say is if someone's listening and they're like, well, I'm interested in being a third to someone, but how will I be treated? How, how would a couple make sure that I still feel included and important? And how, what would you say to that? Well, I would say that of course, for both of us, a priority, it, 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 it is very important to us that whoever joins in, uh, feels respected and feels appreciated. Well, I mean, I appreciate anybody who wants to, you know, share that intimacy with us, but who, who wants to, to give themselves in that way. Um, and so, so I'm very grateful for that. And I think that we, we, we respect and appreciate them for that. And we want them, we genuinely want them to have an amazing time. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I love it when somebody, I don't want somebody to come join in and just have a mediocre experience with us and feel like, Oh, okay. That was, that was okay. Um, uh, but at the same time, I think anybody should, I think that you're, I think that you're, you're maybe you would have to be deluding yourself to think, oh, well, I'm going to go join in with this established partnership who has invested year, perhaps years into each other. And they have built a life together, uh, that isn't just, isn't just sexual, but they've, they've literally, you know they they've uh they share a schedule and they share daily routines and they share maintaining a home together and and possibly raising children together mm -hmm. um so if i mean if it if it came down to i i don't know what how this would arise but a, a conflict where i had to respect uh, this other person's preferences or respect your preferences. Well, of course I'm going to respect your preferences because as, as much as I value the other person, like you're who you're, you're who I'm building a life with. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so I, I don't know, is couples privilege regarded as a, as a bad thing? I, that just, that just seems like obvious. Of course, of course, the established partner is going to to have some priority. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean we're going to treat. That doesn't mean the couple should treat the 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 newcomer or the third partner uh, disrespectfully. But but yeah, that's that's what you're going into. You're going into an established relationship between two other people. Um. I would love to add that we we get to experience this with our married partner that we have. She yeah. has four children. She has a husband. They've been married 12 years. And 
I think part of that for us is being curious about the husband and asking questions about him and asking about the kids and going in. We, we met our partner's husband last night together um, and getting to, to know him and being in their home. And so for us, it's not taking our third person and like putting them as this little bubble where they, they just have interactions with us. It's like realizing that they're in a marriage they're in, they're a mom. They have all kinds of obligations outside of just us. And so for, for me, it's things like considering their schedule, considering they might have certain needs when they come to us and feel depleted, or they might need a massage or they might need to just be held, or they might need us to cook them dinner or, like it's, there's a consideration built in, I think, when you have people attached to you and you're in partnership with them. It, yeah. And if I could add to that, I would, I would never want, like, if I were going into, you know, well, let's say her, uh, I would never want her to sacrifice some, some aspect of her relationship with her, her husband or children to, for my gratification. Like I wouldn't, I would have never want to put her in that position. I would, I would avoid putting her in that position. Um, and this is, this is kind of a, maybe kind of a, a related scenario where recently um, I met someone on, on FetLife and, uh, and I misunderstood at first that she I, I had the misunderstanding that she and her husband saw people separately. And so we were, we started talking and, and hit it off really well and flirted a bit. And, um, uh, and so basically to make a long story short, what happened was there was an opportunity where the, the husband, you know, it, it wasn't the situation that, that they were just seeing people separately. It was a situation where the husband wanted to be involved in anything that she was involved in, which was reasonable. Now she was kind of pushing. She, she was like interested in kind of loosely adhering to the guardrails her husband had established, but seemed pretty okay with, you know, uh, just stepping outside of them occasionally and, and, you know, uh, was it better to ask for forgiveness later than to ask for permission, uh, sort of mindset. And, um, so while it seemed like there was a plausible scenario where we could, you know, she would, might be able to, to join in with us and, and just play with us and the husband be kind of off to the side, uh, like she, she kind of expressed interest in, in the possibility of that. Uh, I didn't want that. I didn't want to, I, I mean, I respected him. I respected their partnership. I recognized that they were a married couple. They have children. And even if, you know, I could maybe coax her into satisfying, you know, our immediate desire for a fun sexual time, uh, I didn't want to do that to to their relationship and to and to her husband who I who I knew would have been hurt like and he seemed like he he was kind of hesitant to assert his will or he lets his he lets his uh, will bend to appease her a bit from my perspective just from what I was seeing and but I knew it, I knew it would have, I knew it would have hurt him. I knew he wouldn't have enjoyed just seeing her go off and, and play with us. Um, so I, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to make somebody, I don't want to put somebody in a position of, of, uh, having to, having to damage or, or strain their relationship, uh, to, to gratify us or to gratify, you know, my, my, uh, lust. Mm -hmm. That's so I'm story. totally, I'm totally fine with couples privilege. Please assert your couples <laughs> privilege. Nothing, nothing makes me feel more hopeful mm -hmm. and, uh, and reinforces my outlook than people prioritizing their partners over their, you know, open, uh, sexual exploits. Mm -hmm. Thank you, baby.
That's a good one to end on because I think it encapsulates everything that we've been talking about from guardrails to couples privilege, to why we date women, to like how you nudge people back in, even to their own guardrails from their husband, you know, Mm -hmm. and you did such a great job of shutting that down, even though I knew that you wanted it and it could have been really hot and sexy for us. Mm -hmm. Um, And you were like, nope, because we're not going to, we're not going to hurt the husband. You know, we respect him and we appreciate him. And, and then it just, you know, it leaves more room for us to have space for people that are really aligned, that do want both of us and that we can share. So I love you. Thank you for coming on. I love you too. Thanks for having me. It was fun. It's always fun. Uh, Enjoy this. All All right. right. We'll see you later. Okay. (laughs) Bye-bye.